10 prompts you must be using now that Grok 4 is live. We've had some friends go out here and test these things and I wanted to walk you through the different prompts and the different pieces and the ways you can use them to make your business and your day-to-day -day actions better using the new and the latest AI. By the way, if you are here, don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow for more. I am going to be posting as much content as I can about all of the latest and the greatest things that are going out here in the world of AI and also how you can use this to help grow your business and fuel your ventures as you move forward in the day-to-day -day world with this crazy shit that just comes up every single day. All right, so let's jump in. So in here, we have an example. There's 10 different ways you can use Grok that honestly, it does sort of feel like you're cheating. In a previous conversation, I discussed how it is going to be able to help you with reasoning and articulation and iterating on things. Now, it may not be the end all be all. You don't just use it as its only source of truth, but it can be an amazing place to start getting your frameworks in place. Now, I will say while you can use these on Grok 4, you can also use a lot of these same prompts that we're gonna look through today in something like 4O Mini and or like ChatGPT's Deep Reasoning, which I think both have their place. And again, as a note, Grok is a bit more expensive than OpenAI's ecosystem. So take this for what you will, but I hope that you get a very good idea of what we can do. It's ability to come in and do deep research and analytical reasoning to help you replace all this crazy stuff that big companies are paying hundreds of thousands of dollars for. Pretty freaking cool. In here, this is just some of the basic frameworks that I always recommend in every conversation that we've talked about of giving it a context and setting it up for a role. Here's who you are, here's what you do, here's who you're replicating. And then, because if you're doing X, Y, Z, here's what your goal outcome is. And I want you to return X, Y, Z in this type of response. This is amazing. The only thing I would actually add to this is if I could iterate and provide you potentially a closer example. However, you do give it a lot more freedom by keeping this open enough so that way it goes through and provides you outputs similar to this. So in this instance, let's say that you're wanting to go and do a deep research on the commercial real estate market and the effects and the trends of everything that's going on in your space for you to build out a plan for expanding your business and your market and beating out the people who are the biggest players and potentially making some adjustments in the way that you do business by adapting towards some new trends that are coming out. You'd be able to use this to get you that deep insight, that deep guidance, as it's way less filtered than a lot of the other platforms as of right now that have come out when it comes to AI and just using this for deep research and information. Another one, building interactive tools. Now, this I still would love to see how this works compared to something like Claude Code. And the reason is, is I sort of have a love affair with Claude Code right now and its ability just to develop super freaking badass tools and systems and softwares and systems for clients that are production ready. However, so far I have seen some really cool ecosystems where it's able to go through, you can give it some detail on what you want to do. And within one or two iterations, you're able to get a pretty good starting point. So we can jump ahead here. You know, it's going through. And just within the editor itself or the chat, it's going and doing all of the coding. And in the example that this is showing, pretty good. It's pretty fast. And then it says how to go through and set this all up. The difference here is I use something like Windsurf as well. And I love that Windsurf, I have the ability just to drop something into here and it truly builds the front end, the back end, interconnects everything and I can work on deploying everything pretty quickly. This does seem to do a really good job of giving you the tools and the resources, um, but uh, more time will tell. However, if you are gonna use this, you'll see here, we got a very similar prompt. Here you are, software architect that excels at building no code and low code systems with HTML, JavaScript and web APIs. Note this here, this key block with the platforms that you want to use is a very key call out. If you don't do this, it's going to go and identify what it finds the best for whatever it is that you want to do. And that might not be the most up to date, the most accurate, the most so on and so forth. So this is a must have in your prompt. Give it that very cool detail on your task or your tool idea. And then this is like a good starting point to give a, an outline. 
I actually would go through and show you guys in another video a much more in-depth way of doing this because we wouldn't do it like this for you to build a software platform. However, you can build maybe a micro tool that is pretty cool. So I think that this is a great introduction into what that would look like for, as it says, an MVP, a little demo, just to really show what's possible or if your idea is viable. Number three, generating infographics. This one I think is pretty sweet because Let's be real, generating infographics, unless you love looking at your computer all day, is something no one really cares or likes to do. And this is just right down the line of us being able to use this to generate lead magnets for ourselves and our business. So you go through and have an offer. Do you want to go and generate individual smaller lead magnets or offerings that you can present out to people? Well, you might be able to use this to help you generate a lead magnet way better than you could have before. Now, this version that we're looking at in this example is using a mermaid diagram. So this, in terms of an actual lead magnet, I would not say that this is amazing. This is more in the aspect of wireframing and technical design. I would love to see a couple examples of high quality infographics that are actually client ready and the prompts that people are using to actually get those results. So again, this is good. This is a great starting point. I think it could definitely be better. No Figma or Canva is needed. Figma and Canva 100% is still needed. You're just not going to be able to beat a designer using this prompt. You're definitely going to want to have some image examples or references or comparative outputs. So again, in this, your real world-class visual explainer and technical designer transform this concept into a visual infographic using Mermaid JS or another code-based diagram platform. Outline the concept here. You would do a full detail of all the things that you're wanting to list, and then here in the return, this just gives you an example, so that way you know the output that you're going to get. Number four. McKinsey style web presentations, I would love, love, love to see something that can help build higher quality presentations. Again, this isn't a terrible instance. There are just inherently tools that I think you don't have to pay $300 a month to get access to a platform that can build you a presentation that's like 10 times better than this. But it's still very cool that you're able to go in and develop these things and develop a web style presentation. If it was me, I would, again, I'm still leaning on, and I mentioned this in a previous video, contextual reasoning and its ability to break things down and create plans, I think is going to be the most valuable resource for Grok4. There are other use cases. We have other use cases in here that are working, but doing this, I would much rather just use another ecosystem that's optimized for building presentations. Do you mean? And there's plenty of them out there that are really, really good that do embed AI. So I can show you this one, you know, act as a strategy consultant using a web-based presentation. Here's your topic. You should give topic and details and go in and provide all this extra lovely insight and input. Tutor replacement? Mm -hmm. Maybe. I did find that using something like ChatGPT's OpenAI, and then uploading, say you wanted to start learning Spanish or something, uploading an entire book or a series of resources is a very unique way of using AI. And using something like Grok4 potentially could be a great way of doing that, especially if you're going to be able to go through and add and upload your own documentation. Assuming it's not highly personal data, do not do that with this, especially this, is you can come in and say, hey, I need you to, uh, I need you to come in and sort of function on this topic. And when it comes to this, it's really important to understand that you give it this basic context as well as reference data. So that way you can then have it go, hey, I am learning this. This is where I'm at. I want to be able to talk to you and practice my Spanish, per se. Pretty good reference point, honestly. Now, it inherently already should have a ton of training data on Spanish and what it sounds like, but Giving it some direct structure, I think is gonna be a great way for you to use this. So for school and education, I actually think this would be perfect for this. So if you're a world-class private tutor, teach me X topic I'm a, as if I'm a motivated beginner. Again, I would give it any available resources as an addition. 
then provide this. And uh, yeah, man, I think this is pretty cool. Content creation, newsletters, threads, YouTube scripts. Um, I think this could be pretty cool. I've not had time to play with it. Um, but this, this aspect here, mixing, just even looking at the prompt, making it not feel AI generated. Inherently, the easiest way for you to do this is to have a lot of training data of how you write, how you talk, how you think, how you communicate. So if you don't have that, I mean, I'll be straight up. You can get a really cool output that looks good, that is grammatically correct, that is well formatted, that is well structured and has all of these blah, 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 blah. But what's really going to allow you to get this and communicate in the way you communicate. So anyone who does read it and who knows you reads it goes, yeah, that's him or them or they or her or whatever. It's going to come from training data. If you don't give it training data, you are going to be fighting tooth and nail for properly, for getting the proper output and the way that it should write and communicate in the way that you speak and think. Otherwise, it's not going to be on brand. However, a lot of people are not writing content that has to be in their exact tone of voice. Um, but I think you could do something like this. If you are referencing for a brand, if you're doing content for your brand and not yourself, this is a great instance where you could provide examples from your website of what you do, how you talk, how you think, how you act, and then put in these pieces and have it work on proper mirroring, as you see here, mirror creator or brand. Again, you have to have reference points. So if you don't have reference data, you can't just name the company or the business. You need to physically upload resources with it, documents, pages, you know, what have you. Do that and use this prompt. You're going to get a pretty good output. Strategic making assistant. Again, this leans right into the area I think it's going to do very, very well at is its ability to articulate and reason and function as a secondary person or brain that you're able to interact with. By using something like this, we're able to go in and start mapping out SWOT analysis, personas, and working through next steps of a decision. I think this is going to be an amazing way for you to just get ahead when it comes to using platforms consistently and day to day. Here's a pretty good little prompt for you to use. Um, act as a strategic business advisor, decision to evaluate, right? Here's what you you call out your problem. You could just do like a speech text. And then you also add in, I think depending on your setting, you may or may not want what exactly is listed here for the decision making. You could say, hey, I need you to function as my consultant, helping me try to get the best possible outputs. My goals are X, Y, Z. Here's the problem I am trying to solve. Please give me your input, ask questions, and do follow-ups so that I can hopefully have the best path forward and the best amount of clarity on what I should do next. And doing these pieces with that type of framework, I think is going to give you a really good structural foundation to get really solid outputs with something like Rock 4 or, honestly, OpenAI's ecosystem. Writing long-form reports. This is really cool. I like this. Again, I think that there's a lot of value to this. You need to give it training data. Give it training data. Like you need to give it training data on the structure. So this is really cool. It's going to be able to develop some really good content, but you want to just keep in mind that it probably is going to want to be in a specific type of brand or tone of voice because otherwise you and I are going to read it and we're going to be like, yeah, this is cool. It sucks. <laughs> yes, it can write really good, but at the same time, there's a lot of improvements that could be made when it comes to making sure it's matching tonality and structure and flow for each other. So keep that in mind. However, if you want to go through and use it to try to help at least write really good starting points for your white papers, use this prompt. Your senior consultant writing a white paper for a tech savvy audience. This, you just change your audience, whatever it is. More detail you give, the better it's going to be. You know, like, B2B predominantly C-level executives in the tech space who have a background in computer science who are interested in X, Y, or Z, and I am discussing this topic with them and its impact on Y, Z, A, B, C, D, Y, right? Provide this structure and then provide it with this structured output and with the way that it communicates. Ideation and evaluation. This consistently iterates and leans into the ability for it to articulate and dive deep into problem solving. 
This, I think, can be really, really good. Again, the more context and clarity you give it, the better these outputs are going to be. Your first prompt should always probably be your most bulky and in-depth prompt. So lead with detail, so to speak. You're a veteran product strategist and market analyst. Here's my idea. I'm looking for you to understand and help me validate, ask questions, as well as return the following. So go through problem solved, target users, existing alternatives and their gaps. What differentiates this idea? Why or why not? What are the risks? What are the goods? What are the bads? And what would be a high level plan for me to validate my idea? Because the biggest thing when it comes to using AI and automation nowadays is not so much that you can't think of a really cool idea. It's your speed to execute on that idea and not sit here wasting time, crashing and burning and building something that no one's going to care about after you put a lot of time, energy, and resources into it. So think fast, move fast, iterate, and plan for the long haul, right? Finally here, summarizing long reports and PDFs, and honestly, I would even add calls and transcriptions into this, is its ability to come in and start breaking and summarization of this content. I think that this is highly valuable. I did see something out there about its ability to hallucinate, though, so do keep in mind that its hallucinations did seem a bit high. Granted, every one of these platforms do hallucinate. So you need to keep in mind the context window that it has, which is the amount of input that we can give it. And the higher we get to the limit of its context window, the higher chance that it will begin to hallucinate because it's just trying to process and understand so much information and then return high quality outputs. So again, you building a good first prompt and then giving it everything that you wanted to have so that it has a full understanding of its goals, its tasks, its outputs, and what it's expecting to provide is gonna be really important here. So like an example, if you're wanting to upload like a 100, 100 page PDF, I think it's pretty beefy and understand it as a whole, here's probably a really good one for you guys to start using. Your senior analyst skilled in digesting technical and academic documents. Your task is to summarize this attached document for a time poor founder of XYZ. Focus on the key findings, crucial data points, and strategic implications on how it may affect us. Format. I almost like saying markdown text, as in bold headers, bullet points, plain language, and with recommended next steps or decisions. And then you have, I love that it details target length. So target length will really help to ensure that the output is more properly structured because you gave that, hey, I want you to give all this stuff, but I don't want you to write a whole nother book. I want you to read everything, contextualize it, articulate it, and simplify it enough for me in this way. So again, this is just about everything. If you guys have any comments or questions or your own input, or if you've played with Grok 4 and have a different perspective on this, let me know in the comments down below. Other than that, talk to you guys again here soon. Thanks. Bye.